Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Wednesday, December 30, 2020. Only one more day and we can get this damn thing behind us. Let's hope 2021 is a friendlier time for all of us and safer time. Uh, we're back with the 1957 19 foot Century Viking. And Anthony's continued digging and sanding. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's no fun to be critical. And so therefore my goal here is not to be critical, but maybe to share some information to save other people from the dreadful mistakes that have been visited on this hull. I'm well aware that it was all in the spirit of a well-intentioned effort to keep the hull from leaking, but there have been some attempts by, I don't know who, uh, to address the leaking issues in ways that only contributed to further leaking. So I thought I'd try to bring a little bit of experience and information to bear on that so that maybe some of you can be saved from a similar situation in the future. What we're looking at here is uh, uh, we're ahead of the the Helm Station bulkhead. We're on the starboard side and it's impossible to tell how at this point, but this strake has been broken through and through. You, I'm not going to be able to do it with this little camera, but there's you can actually see through and there's light shining. So this has probably been a long-standing issue because we found this crack stuffed with cotton roving, interlux seam compound, and then the uh, ever-present rubber junk that's been just s s spread all over this hull. Now, the problem with the cotton roving, which sadly is not just here. Um, if we move the camera and the light down and I start panning, uh, you can see remnants of the cotton roving that's been jammed into the lap frames throughout almost the uh, the, the lap joints throughout almost the entire length of the boat. Now, what do I mean? This is uh, right up in here's here's a a good example all along here, all along where the garboard meets the keel. Somebody heard from somebody who must have heard from somebody that the best way to deal with this is to take a, a putty knife or something and a hammer and start driving cotton roving up into and I know this the quality of this is uh, less than excellent up into this lap seam the problem with that is that this seam is fastened this way. So as you drive the cotton roving into the overlap between this strake and this strake, what are you doing? You're forcing it open. So you drive some in, go spend too much money for intellect seam sealer, which really doesn't work anyway. And what you do is you open it up. We've got a bunch of failed fasteners in here. We've got a bunch of failed fasteners all along here. Here's a, here's a prime example. Right. Please, please, please. 
unless you're working on a pre-war launch that is Carvel planked, but with basically open seams. They're meant to be caulked, but there you've got two boards butted against each other. You don't have them lapped over. So we've got a bunch of rot in here. Why? Because driving the cotton roving in caused this all to open. And of course, water is going to find its way in here. We're way at, I mean, here's the keel. We're, we're way at the bottom of the boat. Think of the hydrostatic pressure upwards as water tries to get in there. And you can see as I pan down, we have open seams all along. I'm amazed that, uh, that as the owner reports, the bilge pump was able to keep up with the water that had to be flowing in. So if you're going to try to caulk a lap straight boat, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do the games with cotton roving and seam sealer. It's all wrong. It's all just terribly wrong and doomed to failure, actually doomed to damage. Um, you can see along here that the other thing that people have tried to do is to keep driving fasteners in. More and more, let's, let's do a few more fasteners. That'll really tighten it up. Well, now of course, as we replace this straight, and we'll have to, from somewhere in about here. We'll do it between ribs, of course, so that we can have a butt block on the interior side and screw the butt joint into that, uh, the butt block and the new strake and where it meets the old strake will all be bedded in 3M5200 adhesive we will have to use our fine multi-master tool to cut all of these fasteners cut all of these fasteners and release this well this crack reappears down here so we'll we're going to be replacing i don't know four feet five feet of this um and it looks like we've got another one. I don't know if that shadow, my finger is going to show up, but right about there to deal with. Um, what's the right product when you have it assembled and you've cleaned out the lap seam of everything right down to bare wood, then what you want to do is Seal it with four full coats of Smith's clear penetrating epoxy sealer and then reach for the total boat Thixo Flex flexible adhesive. That'll do it. That's what we will eventually do with this boat. But in every one of these seams, uh, we get to, I'm saying that with a grimace, clean out all this crap right up to bare wood. Um, so that's our bottom update on the 1957, 19 foot century Viking. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boat Works.